Carmen Bennett and Molly Hodges welcomed Stephanie Renee Bennett into the world on April 30, 1979, in Rocky Mount, Franklin County, Virginia. She was chosen as Miss Personality by her senior class at her high school in Rocky Mount, Virginia, according to her father, Carmen. He recalled how her daughter could be the life of the party and quipped, you just had to know her. She simply always had a smile on her face, and it was a really unique smile. She was just generally really happy and outgoing. Stephanie read a lot and loved anything to do with the water, including swimming, boating, and tubing behind the boat. She had both an outgoing and an introverted side. She was my angel, says her brother Jay Bennett. She and I were more intimately connected than anyone else in the world. Stephanie led a privileged existence, according to her relatives, attending school only 45 minutes from her house. After earning her degree from Roanoke College in Salem, Virginia, in 2001, she relocated to Raleigh in Wake County, North Carolina, to work for IBM. Along with Deanna Powell and Emily Metro, Stephanie resided in the Bridgeport Apartments on Lake Lynn. She adored it, Jay remarked. She never voiced any complaints about it. She adored her apartment, the residents of this area, and her job. She needed to be independent. The discovery of the 23-year-old gagged, strangled, and said assaulted inside her home on May 21, 2002, was shocking. She was discovered naked and holding underwear in her mouth in one of the bedrooms, according to police records. Stephanie had multiple wounds on her face and belly in addition to a 13-inch bruise around her neck. She was shackled, possibly with handcuffs, based on the markings that were discovered on her wrists and ankles. She had reportedly been sexually attacked, and her defense wounds showed that she had attempted to fend off her attacker. The official cause of death, according to the medical examiner, was strangling. According to police records, the offender also took Stephanie's 1995 compact JVC MXC 220 audio system as a souvenir of the crime. On May 21, Stephanie Bennett's worried housemates called the Bridgeport Apartment Complex's office after being unable to reach her at home, at work, or on a cell phone. They allowed a maintenance worker from the apartment building to examine their first floor unit since they were out of town. After discovering Stephanie's body, the employee notified the police. The assailant had entered the house through a window whose screen was reported missing. The investigators concluded after inspecting the crime scene. The detectives were inundated with leads and clues from the start, but none of them ultimately materialized. They first suspected Christopher Campen, who was detained a week after the murder for breaking into nearby apartments. He was eventually removed from the list, though, thanks to DNA proof. Richard Evanitz, a suspected serial killer who is thought to be responsible for the deaths of several young girls, was another person the police suspected. The police also determined Richard was unrelated to the case after he committed suicide in June 2002. In August 2003, Stephanie's father, Carmen, offered a $100,000 reward for information leading to an arrest in the crime as the case went cold, and no arrests had been made even after a year. In May 2004, he also brought legal action against the owners and administrators of the North Raleigh apartment building, claiming that criminal activity had taken place there. Police were contacted 942 times for violent crimes, Six crimes, and break-ins in the two and a half years before the murder, which led the lawsuit to additionally place the blame on a lack of security measures. However, more than three years after the murder, 
the case was finally solved with the use of DNA evidence. Drew Edward Plantin, 35, was apprehended by Raleigh Police on October 19, 2005, in the 4000 block of Reedy Creek Road, and they accused him of killing Stephanie. Drew reportedly earned a biology degree from Michigan State University and worked as a chemistry technician in a fertilizer laboratory for the North Carolina Department of Agriculture. He was taken into custody outside the lab. Drew relocated to the region in 1998 after landing a job with the State Agriculture Department, according to new sources. Investigators determined that he lived a mile or less from Stephanie's house at the time of her death. Additionally, the authorities discovered no evidence that Stephanie knew her attacker. The State Bureau of Investigation's crime lab, along with the detective's traditional police work, was praised in a police report for helping to solve the case. According to reports, Drew was the same person described as a dog walker seen by Stephanie's neighbors. He was also regarded as a suspect in relation to a peeping incident that occurred at the apartment building before the homicide. I always had a funny sensation about him, according to his neighbor Dana Allen. I warned my husband to watch him since I believed he wasn't acting correctly. In the Wake County Jail, Drew was being held without bond. Based on police warrants more than 350 things, including an arsenal of weapons made up of nine handguns, two shark guns, a lot of ammunition, 40 knives, two machetes, and a sword, were taken by Raleigh police detectives from Drew's residence. Additionally, they include a weapon with a 45 caliber that has a direct connection to Rebecca Hewisman's unsolved 1999 headshot killing in Lansing, Michigan. Rebecca was a 22-year-old woman. In accordance with court records, the police collected his DNA sample by swabbing lab surfaces and removing the gloves he was wearing. True, who killed himself in prison on January 2, 2006, was never charged or found guilty, though. He allegedly refused to eat or comply with jail staff after being arrested, which led to his transfer from the Wake County Jail to Central Prison. He was taken to the emergency hospital after being found comatose in his prison cell at around 2 p.m. At 2.37 p.m., the 35-year-old's death was officially declared. He was never accused of murdering Rebecca, and he was not found guilty of Stephanie's death either. In both murders, he continues to be the leading suspect. A murder case that gripped the triangle for years finally gets a day in court. But not the kind of court many people expected. Criminal charges in the Stephanie Bennett case died when Drew Plantin committed suicide at Central Prison. But the civil case lives on as a jury determines whether the apartment complex is liable for her death. Amanda Lamb was in the courtroom as the trial began. She joins us live with more. Amanda. Well, Gerald, Bennett's family had to leave the courtroom today when the details of the crime were discussed by the lead investigator. It's an emotional case, so emotional that attorneys for the apartment complex asked the jurors to make decisions with their minds and not their hearts. But attorneys for the Bennett family say they believe the apartment complex could have prevented Stephanie Bennett's murder. One thing both sides can agree upon, the man who investigators say killed 23-year-old Stephanie Bennett in May 2002, Drew Planton, was a ritualistic serial killer who stalked his victims. He was dangerous, ruthless, cold-blooded. The evidence will show that she suffered before she died. One thing they can't agree upon is whether or not Planton alone is responsible for Bennett's death. Carmen Bennett, Stephanie's father, is suing Bridgeport Apartments. He says a prowler seen and not reported to tenants, high shrubs, poor lighting, and a broken window lock contributed to his daughter's death. Anything Investigators say Planton may have entered through the window. Even when the window appeared to be latched and locked, um, it was a very simple matter to press lightly on the window, 
with your fingertips and push it up. Lawyers painted a chilling picture of a man who stalked Bennett, waited until she was alone in her apartment, attacked her in her sleep, raped her, killed her, and then went to his job as a state chemist. But Planton, who killed himself in prison, was never tried for the crime. That this case is not about Drew Planton. It's about the conditions that existed at Bridgeport that were one of the causes of Stephanie's murder. This is an effort to hold Bridgeport Apartments and it, its owners liable for a crime which it did not commit. Now, because this case was never heard in a criminal courtroom, a lot of the details are being released for the very first time in this case. For example, they're talking about the fact that Planton was connected to as many as three murders, two of those in Michigan. When they searched his apartment, they found details, personal information detailing 27 women. Some of those women, they say he stalked. They also say they found belongings from murder victims and from some of the other women that he stalked in that apartment. So a lot of very difficult evidence during this trial. Gerald. Certainly is. Amanda Lamb live in Raleigh. Thanks.